At the moment here, we created or we declared three variables, and these variables store one thing. Uh, we can create other types of objects that can store more than one thing. This is known as an array. An object can also store HTML and other things. So let's put this together. We'll explain what an array is, and then we'll see how we can use JavaScript to change HTML. So let's say at the very end of our code, we will say, comment declare variables one to store an array and another to store an HTML node. Remember when I said about JavaScript, I showed you somewhere in the book here a flowchart of that the web browser sees uh, the head block and it sees a paragraph, it sees all of those. Another term for that is a node. A p tag is a node. So far what we've got inside of the HTML file, we've got a few nodes. We've got this head node, everything inside of there, then, then a meta node and a title node. So every like branch of this is a node. And we can use JavaScript to store what's inside of the title. To, to view what's inside of the title and store it, and we can use JavaScript to change what's inside of a title or a paragraph or whatever. We need to first create JavaScript objects that sort of point to um, what's in the HTML. So the way we'll do this is at the very end here, declare variables, one to store an array and another to store an HTML node. So next line. We start off with var, the var keyword. We're creating a variable. We're creating an object that can vary. And we will say, let's see, we'll call this based on what the book has, I guess. OK, we'll do colors. This is page 73. Var colors equal to colors, plural. That means I want to store more than one. If this was. These can be called anything, but if it was called color equals red, this variable is storing one value, red. I want to store more than one. The way it's done, the syntax, the way it has to be done is we have open and close square brackets. Now, we are need, going to need to keep track of these parentheses. And when we use them, we'll get to that later. Parentheses, curly braces aka curly brackets and then also square brackets square braces square brackets they all have a different purpose we'll get to those purposes as we go on but for the moment when we create a variable when we declare a variable and an array sorry an array uh, we assign it, that's the equals, we assign it uh, with the square brackets. So an array allows you to store more than one thing at once. An array lets you store more than one thing at once. And the things we can store are numbers, strings, booleans, and other things we'll cover. An array lets you store more than one thing at, a, at once, separated by commas. Se separated by commas. We're able to separate, we're able to separate uh, everything in here by commas. So I want a list of colors. So we'll do this. Quotes, blue, comma, green, comma, white, and one more, yellow. So all four of these 
values are being stored in one object. That's the purpose of an array, to store more than one thing at once. It's a very specific way to write it, a certain syntax. We still have, we're declaring a variable, whatever it's called. Assignment operator, we're setting it to something. Take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left. That's that. Then the new thing is square brackets. Obviously, it has to be square brackets. If it's parentheses, it won't work properly. If it's curly braces, that means something else. It has to be square brackets. And we're storing now here strings, which up there I wrote strings are in quotes. Um, we could technically then do comma 99. It will allow that, but it doesn't make sense. This, ver this array is supposed to store colors, and 99 is not a color. It's a number. It would let us do that, but that's not really logically correct. Syntactically correct? Yeah, just add a comma and add a new thing. Logically correct? Nope, 99 is not a color. If I were having a new variable here, variable high scores, then I could put in an array collecting high scores, numbers. So, values in an array are accessed as if they were in a numbered list. It's important to know that the number of this list starts at 0, not 1. Well, this is saying now, if I want to retrieve one of the items in the array to display it, um, I need to uh, mention its place in the order of this. Uh, for the moment, we're going to display this in the console not on screen. Remember the console is where we can give messages in the F12 console. I want to display the first item of the array. So I mentioned the name of the variable, square brackets, and then the position that I mean. I mean the first position. And we have to memorize that when dealing with most programming languages, the first position is 0 not one. So we have to get used to that. When I want to talk about the very first item, blue, it is the zero with position, not one. If I were to say colors one, that would give me the second, because we have zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. So we have to remember, I guess, to add one, or subtract one, add one to the one that we mean. I mean the second item, 0, 1. OK, subtract 1. So to see this result, you run your HTML, you press F12, and in the console, it will then, it should then tell you blue, or green, actually. If you put a 0, it should tell you blue. The 0 with item of the list. Square brackets here to say, this is an array. Go to the zeroth position of the array, blue. Checking in my browser to confirm. Remember, press F12. If it's not open already, press F12 and go look on your console. Because we're trying to display in the console, not in the main window. Document.write is the main window. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in the console. Does everyone get that? Do you get your first color? If you get the different color, you might have gotten the wrong position. But do you get that result? Blue. If I wanted to display the fourth color, let's see, zero, one, two, three. So it's third, position three. I put a three. The result is yellow. to display or select the position in the array, start counting with 0. So position 0, 1, 2, etc. And this can have an infinite number of positions.
In the example earlier up about the greeting, the time of day and such, we declared the variable early on, var greeting. We didn't set it to anything. We set it later after we checked the time. We have something similar here. We declared a variable, we did set it to something, and then we displayed it. We can then change what was in the array. Let's say I no longer want blue, I want red. I want to replace blue with red. We're able to do that. I'll write it in the comment in a moment, but the, the way to do it is we say colors. We say the name of the thing we're working with. We don't have VAR at the beginning because we're not creating a new array. We're changing an existing one. Square brackets, 0, equal to, quotes, semicolon, red. Because now we're dealing with an object that has many sub-objects, sort of. Now that we have many possible things in one object, here now, we have to say which position do we mean we will assign something to that position, take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left, at position 0. To show that that worked, we have to display the console log again because it's sequential. Mm -hmm. It would have displayed the console line 58. It would have then continued to line 60, and then it would have ended. It wouldn't have known that you want to display it again. We have to be explicit and dis display it again. Colors at position 0. We define the array. We put all the colors. Show me color 0. Done set color 0 to something else. Show it to me again. It should now say red. First blue, then red, and then the program is done. To set a value in an array, we have to state its position, counting from 0. This is something we have to get used to. Almost all programming languages follow that. When there is a sequence of numbers or words or whatever, when there's, a, when there's an object that stores a sequence of things, almost always every programming language starts from zero. The whole array is still there. I'm not redefining. The other colors will stay there. Because up here I said, let's create an array with four positions. So there's still four positions here. Okay. It's just saying on the zero width position, change it. Oh, okay. So you're just basically changing the value of the zero position from blue to red. Yes, because I did not say VR at the beginning. It's right. taking the currently existing array and only changing the zeroth position. If I had said VAR like that, that would be like create an array with only one position and put one number into it, one, one, one color, value. Okay. one value. Okay. That's why we don't usually save our again later, because this is recreating it. I don't want to lose okay. the other three colors. I want to okay. use the variable with all four, but only change one. If I check my result, the first time on line 58, or uh, yeah, line 58, it displayed blue, because that's how I first created the array. Then I changed the zeroth position to red, and showed me the zeroth position again, and now it's red. And the other positions still exist. If I were to say over here, show me first position, green. The first, the four still exist. I never touched one, two, or three. Just one, just zero. So the other ones still exist.
Okay, well, uh, up on line 50, I said declare variables, one to store an array, and another to store an HTML node. I'm displaying this in the console. I want to display it on screen. And we already know that it seems like document.write will allow that to happen. But we have more precise ways. What if we've got different paragraphs? What if we've got a welcome paragraph, and then we've got an about us paragraph, and then some third paragraph? I want to display a color on one of those three paragraphs. Document.write is not targeting where in my document to write what I want, technically at the very end, because it's the last thing. I want to target an exact place in my HTML. JavaScript can do that. If we say, this is the HTML node we mean, it'll make more sense to first put our placeholder in the HTML and then write the JavaScript referencing it. So let's jump back to our HTML file for a moment. And we've got line 7, the body starts, line 9 or so, the script starts. Let's say we're going to have a paragraph here, and another paragraph. There's nothing in those paragraphs. Let's say in this paragraph, my name, space, my favorite color. two paragraphs. I want to put the value of my favorite color in one of these paragraphs. I have to target a specific paragraph. This is where then IDs and classes come in. Just like we've used IDs and classes in CSS to target a specific element to be affected by CSS, we can use IDs and classes for JavaScript to know what do we mean specifically, which paragraph. So we'll add an ID attribute to each of these. So yes, we just have to memorize. IDs and classes could be used for CSS or JavaScript. They have two purposes. CSS is to change the color, the size, whatever. JavaScript could be used to change what's in the paragraph remove what's there, add to it, read what's there, etc. We'll say here, um, name paragraph, color paragraph. And the capitalization, I like to put it in here for readability. So now these have unique IDs. JavaScript can determine which of the two paragraphs that I mean. Before this, uh, it didn't easily perhaps know which of the two we meant. Now that they're uniquely identified via JavaScript, we can create an object that references a certain paragraph, a certain node in HTML. This paragraph is related to body is related to HTML. Title is related to head, which is related to HTML. Remember that flowchart. All right, so create that, save it in the HTML. We'll come back to JavaScript. Maybe I can look at it side by side a little bit right here. It's going to be tight in a moment, but I'll scoot over in a moment. So after we created our variable of colors, the purpose of this variable is to store a list of colors in an array. I want to create a brand new variable, a, a brand new object. I want to declare a new variable that points to or references this element or this node, this particular paragraph. 
it's very common and, and the book uses this term so I will use it too I think it's very useful um, EL short for element color pair uh, color paragraph capital C I'll explain why in a moment color paragraph equals something so as before I'm creating a variable I'm declaring a variable this can be called anything you want as long as it's consistent it could be called kitty and it'll work as long as you keep it consistent so consistency EL is common to use as a prefix to show this is an element. This is a variable that's storing an HTML element. Sometimes I see programmers write it with O for object, or OBJ for object, or what else I see sometimes, uh, N for node. This is when people disagree. What's the right way? They're all right and they're all wrong. It just depends on you know what you learned, what makes sense to you, and all of that. The book is using element. I use element as well, so we'll keep it consistent. We're creating a variable referencing an element, this element, and this one's called color paragraph. Now I put a capital C here, and that's not an error because I'm inventing right now an object which I can call whatever I want. You could keep it with a lowercase c just like this one over here and that's not right or wrong but what is common to do when you create names of things in any language especially when it's multiple words to capitalize the second or third word just to be able to read it L color paragraph is the exact same as L color paragraph one is hard to read one is less hard to read so even though, yes, there's a lowercase c in the HTML, it doesn't matter here. It's just easier to read. And you're declaring a new variable. Yeah, you're inventing a brand new thing right now. Yeah, so this could be kitty cat. Could be kitty cat. Could be kitty. Could be kitty. However you want to name it, as long as you keep it consistent. So we mean this ID in the HTML. So here's something new that we will use over and over. Document dot. So now we're saying, let's go look in the main HTML document. And previously we had document dot write. Now we want document dot get element, capital E, by, capital B, ID capital I only this is a mistake beginners always make you put capital I capital D nope it's capital I lowercase d you just have to memorize that document dot get element by ID parentheses semicolon in quotes inside the parentheses the ID see the command let's go get some element that exists we're going to go get it. We're going to go reference it by its ID. That paragraph has an ID of what? Color paragraph. It's right there. This paragraph has an ID of color paragraph. So now we're creating a variable, we're declaring a variable, we're creating an object, call it whatever you want, and what's what it's equal to, what it's set to is, let's run the command, go to the document, find an element by the ID, x, color paragraph. So now here, we can refer to that HTML paragraph in our JavaScript by L color paragraph. Yes. Is there any particular reason why, for simplicity, we wouldn't want to call it variable color paragraph instead of L color paragraph? It's a convention uh, to put L here because it's an element. It's based on an HTML element. If we didn't have L, we might confuse ourselves into thinking, this is a color that I'm defining 
instead of this is an element I'm trying to control. So often using that prefix of L is element, because we have here, get an element of HTML by its ID. So these names can be anything we want, but we commonly use L to remind ourselves this is an object that is referencing an HTML element. Simply color paragraph all by itself might be the value. Maybe I don't have an array. Maybe I have a, ver a variable that says color paragraphs. All paragraphs will be green. Color paragraph equals green. So it's just to differentiate. This is trying to reference an HTML element. All right, so then over here we can say. Can I assume that it's one of the built in ones. Get element by ID is a named keyword, it, it exists already in JavaScript. The browser knows what that means. So, right here n or a JavaScript object referencing, referencing uh, an HTML element node using or by first looking at the whole document and then getting and then uh, searching for or getting searching for something with an ID attribute of color paragraph so this now is a way that we can reference like a shortcut, like a shorthand, whenever we use this, we mean the paragraph in the HTML file. It knows we mean that HTML file, of course, because the HTML file at the very end says, let's connect to a JavaScript file. The job, this JavaScript file will know we mean this HTML file because of this connection at the very end. In the paragraph in question, write the second color value. The paragraph in question is the one we mentioned on line 60. We have two paragraphs in the HTML file. JavaScript really only knows about or cares about one of them, the one that we said get that one. In that paragraph, we want to write the value of the second color in the array. So that happens by saying um, L color paragraph dot text content equal to colors one semicolon oh here's something a little different there's no parentheses here we have this dot operator this dot command we have an object and the dot that's not a method actually it may come back to that in a moment um, but here we're set, we're, again, take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left. That equal is still doing what we've seen before. Take the thing on the right, which is this, which is uh, item number one, right? Uh, zero, one, green. Take the thing on the right, green, and put it into the thing on the left. Set the text content property of this object. And we can say here, dot something, parentheses, is a method, a set of steps. Dot something else is a property what's an, what's another what's a synonym, what's another word for property? 
Remember when we talked about car, the property of its color is silver. The property of its speed right now is 20 miles an hour. The property of its build is Ford. What's another term? What's another word for property? Specification. Specification, sure. Um, just to think of another word here. Um, value? Specification? Something else is a property. A um, Yeah, we'll do specification blanking at the moment but we're not we're not we're not using a method here we're not using a set of steps get element by ID that's a method that's a built-in thing that is saying uh, look at this object go find the ID then find inside of it this it's a set of built-in steps because it's got parentheses methods have parentheses right here parentheses properties don't have a parentheses parentheses it's just it's just the actual value the, the specification when you see the result in the browser the stuff that we did before is still there it's after this stuff because of the sequence. The my name and my color was defined first near the top of the HTML. So it's there. Then at the end of the HTML, we said go do the JavaScript. So in the JavaScript, we had all this stuff about the date and all of that. So that's still there. But at the end, so you see the order of it. It processed the HTML stuff, then the JavaScript stuff. Now this is also happening in JavaScript, but again, because the order of it, the way it's written, that came out first. And wait a minute, I had in the paragraph, it said, my favorite color is, and then this got replaced completely with, right, I had here, my favorite color, and it got replaced with, it simply saying green. It didn't do what I thought it would do. Well, the command we used of text, or the property that we set of text content, doesn't care about what's already there it's going to set what we are telling it these are the nuances that we'll learn as we go on so this is correct it didn't do exactly what I wanted but it's correct of what it understands we thought it'll leave the text my favorite color is and then just add the color nope it'll say whatever the current text content is replace it and put what it is in the array. This is the example of computers are dumb. I had an idea of what I wanted and it didn't do that. It did the most basic thing that it was programmed to do. We have a different command that we can add to what's already there. What's already there is my favorite color. I just want to add to it this particular command this property is only interested in replacing what's there adding something new the one that adds to it at the moment I forgot it I'd have to look it up in the book but we have again a variety of commands or properties or methods that do something Let's do it like this. After the equals, we'll say quotes, my favorite color is colon space. After the quotes, plus, plus in most programming languages doesn't quite work like 1 plus 1 equals 2. I'll come back to that later. But now what I'm saying is there is an object, there is an element in the HTML document. Its text content property will be set to the string my favorite color is and it will also set it to the value of the second item of the array. 
running that, my favorite color is green. Or the value of the third item of the array, my favorite color is yellow. Okay, we'll, we'll check you in a moment. But see here we're getting a little bit more complex. There's still much more to learn, of course. But we've been covering concepts of variables, um, objects, methods, properties. It doesn't. It's not going to stick right away yet. We're going to continue to practice this. But uh, we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg of things. If it didn't quite work, we'll do lab time in just a moment. But here we've got so far, in my case, 70 lines of JavaScript. Most of it is comments. And this is a lot of concepts that are coming from chapter 1 and 2. I'm going to do lab in a moment. General questions? If it didn't quite work, I'll help you in a moment. But general questions of what we looked at today? So again, it'll just take a little practice, but we're going to end the lecture here. I'm going to put a copy of my code up to this point into the network folder in case you want to compare. We'll do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one help if you need it. We come back on Thursday. We'll continue the JavaScript chapters, learning the syntax, best practices, and the different commands. Thank you.